Our next speaker is a great friend of mine. It's her third time speaking here. Her name is Sandy Easton. She is a, a worldwide <laughs> traveler <laughs> and kind of sneaky. Um, so let's give Sandy a very uh, warm welcome, and she has a lovely story to share. I have to hold this. Could you put it in there? Yep. Hi. So um, before I start this, I just want to r remind you who have been here before and heard me. Um, my husband and I lived in Uganda for three years, and amongst all the many great things we got to do there and we're privileged to do, I got to work with um, a baby home and uh, help build a preschool there and work with these orphanages. So this is a story about one of the little girls um, that I fell in love with and met, uh, an orphan at the baby home. I'm going to do this in a unique way. I'm going to do it in first person, so I'm going to be reading her story. I actually wrote a little book. So the slides are going to come, and I'm not paying attention to that. Hopefully I can finish in the five minutes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alma. I am a Ugandan orphan, and this is my story. I was a nobody. The woman that bore me, I cannot call her my mother, for she never lived up to that name. She left me near a toilet pit to die at birth. There were many times I wished I had, but my story is a story of unconditional love, hope, and a life of miracles. My country, Uganda, is full of amazing gifts from God, beautiful animals like zebra, giraffe, elephants, chimps, mountain gorillas, and lions, and dramatic landscapes of acacia trees, snow-capped mountains of the Ranzores and Mount Elgin, forests with lush tropical fruits and waterfalls. There are glistening lakes, including the world's largest freshwater lake, Lake Victoria, filled with fish like the giant Nile perch and home to thousands of birds with brilliant colors and sweet songs. Well, I could tell you more about beautiful Uganda, but back to me and my story. Uganda is not such a grand country for orphans. No one is really sure how old I am. At some point in my young life, I was discarded once again and left at a closed gate of the Purpose Uganda baby home. I barely weighed 10 pounds and was unable to sit up, raise my head, or crawl. The pain that ravished through my body was so intense, I cried all the time. Though I looked and acted like a baby, they knew I was older because I had many teeth. The first miracle was that the baby home aunties took me in, but unfortunately gave up on me after only one month, and I was left alone to lie on a mat in pain and despair. Their secret wish was that I would just die and be on my way. No one knew how to help me, but then a Mzungu woman, this white woman, came into my life bringing me hope. She saw something in me and decided to bring me a better life. That was the second miracle. The baby home was stark and had 20 brothers and sisters sharing a small three-bedroom house where we lived 24-7, never leaving the walled compound. The Mzungu woman, whom we all grew to call Mommy Alma, shared time with me for three years, nurturing me through my sickle cell anemia sickness attacks, providing me medicines and nutrition that were my special need. She taught me to eventually walk, though it was extremely painful, and, and she trust, trusted me to engage with others and learn how to love them and accept them. The one thing I could never learn, though, was to talk. This kept me from attending the preschool that she helped set up at our baby home. But I was allowed to proudly wear the school uniform. I felt loved for the first time. For reasons only God knows, her heart touched mine, and I grew hope and a desire to live. With her encouragement, we started having excursions outside the baby home compound to expand our world and make us more desirable to be adopted as well. Uganda is not a friendly place for orphans after the age of six years old when we are forced out of the baby homes and herded into group homes where atrocious, atrocious things can go on which damage our physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Mommy Alma knew I was reaching that pivotal age and needed rescue to be embraced in a loving family. But who would want a reject like me, who's crippled, sickly, and unable to talk? I really do try to talk. I really do. 
but I just can't. Only noise comes out. Mommy Alma prayed for a miracle all the time, and she even considered adopting me herself. Of course, her husband brought her to her senses that she was at grandma age of life, not at mommy age. I wanted a home, I wanted a voice, I wanted a family to love and to love me. One sad day, she showed up with tears running down her cheeks to say goodbye to me. Uganda immigration had abruptly determined they would not renew her work permit to stay. She had only 10 days to leave the country and return home to America. All my hope crashed to the ground. What would happen to me now? Why did I live at all? We sat on the swing together for a very long time that day. Her prayers continued across the world and she stayed connected through internet with the aunties. 12 months after she left Uganda, the third miracle happened. A loving family showed up at the baby home from America to get to know me and to take me to their home to be part of their family in Minnesota. It took many months of patience and paperwork and red tape and money and hope, but the miracle unfolded. I am now a thriving, happy, loved little girl living in Minnesota for four years now with my new mommy, Gina Church, and her, my daddy and six siblings. Three of them are uh, foster children waiting for adoption as well. I'm so happy now. I'm so grateful too. Now, my fourth miracle, and the greatest one of all, is that I now have a voice. I was deaf, and no one knew. My new family discovered this, and this fact, and we all speak in sign language together now. I go to school, and I'm quite bright, too. Mommy Alma continues to check up on me. Makes me cry. <laughs> but she lives far away in Colorado. We pray that one day she and I will meet again but our hearts are forever joined in love. God gifted both of us on this journey. Thank you for listening to my story, A Life of Miracles.